Good morning, everyone. It's Dan Campbell with Texas Open Door Realty. Welcome to another edition of the Happy Home Owner. I've got David Tandy with me today, the president of Texas National Title. And the other day, I, I went to a, a, a presentation that you did yeah. on the state of our economy and possible things that could happen in the future. And I was super impressed with the information you gave me. And I thought, wow, I need to get this out to my clients and friends. It was that good, and so I arranged to interview David and uh, just uh, find out a little bit of the information that you gave okay, to us. So I wrote down some questions and thought it was an excellent presentation. So we'll just see, get this going, and see how it goes. And if you guys uh, have questions, we may not be able to answer them on the air right now. But if you'll send them to me, I will get David to answer them later, and I'll get you the answer. So, David, you said basically the thing that caught my attention was that the United States is in an unprecedented time of expansion. And you said that we are now two months into the longest expansion since 1900 as far as economy, the economy of the United States. So what's the significance of that? Well, recessions are times whenever we stop growing. And this whole period of time, 10 plus years, we have uh, been, uh, without a recession, we have had our GDP growth. We've been ha having a steady growth. And one of the things that happens when you get to this point where it's the longest that we've ever had is that everyone starts trying to predict a recession, which if there were some indications of a recession, a strong ones, that would be legitimate. But it's also kind of important to remember that there's no time limit on expansions. Uh, there are countries, Australia has been in a 28 year expansion right now. Really? So it's been 28 years since they've had a recession. There's no reason that it can't continue. There needs to be a reason why there would be a recession. There has to be some kind of trigger. Okay. And so um, uh, can you comment related to other countries? Because we just usually tend to, you know, say it's it all depends on the United States. but um, related to that, there are other countries besides, you said, Australia and, and um, what were some of the other ones? Well, there's a number of other countries. Uh, what we have to remember is that as, as the decades have gone on, we are all much more interrelated in the way we Got deal it. with each other. It's, uh, trade is very uh, uh, integrated into everything we do, imports and exports. And, uh, and as that has happened, there have been more and more countries that have uh, a, a more even economy, they, they, including us. Uh, we've, we've gone through now uh, an oil price shock this, uh, during this expansion, did not cause a recession. Okay. Uh, we've gone through uh, you know, other, other issues that have not caused recessions that in the past would have caused recessions. So we're just, all the economies, including ours, is more resilient. Doesn't mean that we're immune to it, but it just means that we're able to uh, go through uh, occurrences that in the past may have caused recession and they don't necessarily trigger one now. Okay, one of the ones you mentioned in the seminar was um, that the stock market has been relatively flat for quite yeah. a while. Yeah. And that's, uh, oftentimes that'll, that will signal a, a recession. Sure, a recession. it causes people to be nervous and to mm -hmm. be fearful and uh, to not have confidence in the economy whenever the stock market, stock market is basically where it was in January 2018. You go back and look at there, we're right about the same place. So we have had basically no growth in that. And yet uh, consumer confidence this last uh, time they uh, surveyed consumer confidence was at a very high rate. Business, it's at a 19 year high. Hmm. Business optimism as at a 45 year high. Uh, builder confidence is very high. So, hmm. you know, that's, uh, they're pretty early warning signs whenever people see things they don't like, like the stock market not doing well. In the past that has triggered them to stop buying. Okay. If they stop buying, that's to, that will slow down our economy. Okay, we had, a, we had an event happen uh, recently in the um, bond market that has caused a lot of yeah. talk. Tell us about that. Well, the uh, whenever whenever long-term bonds uh, and long-term uh, opportunities to invest are paying less than what short-term is, that shows that there people are not as confident. Who those who are buying the treasuries aren't as aren't as confident or buying bonds. Uh, and uh, that's been in the past a pretty good indication. It's called an inverted yield curve. Okay. 
And that has been the past a very consistent uh, indicator of a recession. So as soon as that happened, a lot of people started predicting a recession. And the problem with that is that there's really no other indications of it and of a recession. And you've got people even like Janet Yellen saying, maybe there's some other reasons this time why it has inverted and I wouldn't be so quick to jump to that. Mm. Even if that's the case, I would tell you that that's, uh, it, on the average, it's 22 months later before a recession hits. So it is an indicator, but it's a long-term indicator. And just like last time, I would not expect Austin to have a very much of a significant impact just because of how healthy everything else is here. Okay. Yeah, I remember in the, in the uh, economic, the, the big, the Great Recession, Austin was one of the last cities into the recession and certainly one of the first ones out. It certainly was. So is it, do you, would you predict something similar to oh, that? Oh, with all the, all the big announcements of companies coming here and doing the kind of hiring they're doing, I mean, we've got three years of pretty intense hiring ahead of us that have already been announced, uh, everything from Apple and Google and, and all the rest of the different uh, com- companies that are, have got three years to build everything out that they need and be hiring that entire time is pretty significant. Okay. So I think that's a pretty good uh, pretty good indication for what Austin's can expect from its economy. So you mentioned a couple of other indicators that um, perhaps could lead to issues related to a recession. So one of them was is the amount of debt that we have. So um, do you want to comment on that? Is that just something? Well, it's a little scary is? seeing how much uh, we're, we're approaching, uh, just even our deficit now is going to get close to a trillion dollars for our deficit or $22 trillion in debt. Those numbers are a little, definitely more than we, I think, all expected okay. that, at this point. Uh, so I think that's something that our country has to deal with at some point. I don't know when we get to the tipping point where the amount of debt we have creates its own problems. And uh, we have a very, very large economy and we can support a lot of debt, but I, I wish we'd quit testing it. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, that's uh, great, great. Well, so you said this. it looks good for the city of Austin um, for the next five to 10 years. Uh, all the economists around here are pointing to that, but there are concerns, some concerns in Austin related to some problems that uh, we might face. Do you wanna mention a couple of those? Well, uh, it's almost more of a nationwide. We have somewhat of a challenge. Uh, just home prices keep going up more than what incomes do. Okay. And that's creating an affordability challenge. And that is uh, probably more true nationwide than it is here. We, we, you hear a lot about affordability in Austin, but the truth is our median family income more than supports the median home price for Austin, and that is not necessarily true in many other markets. They are having a much bigger challenge. But it is also true that we continue to to get to the point where our home prices are exceeding what our median family income is. And, uh, and I think over nationwide, I would tell you that it is, in some areas, it is a pretty big gap. It is one of creating a true affordability challenge. On the coastal cities, there are areas where where median income is nowhere near kept up with home prices and just gone out of sight. Sure. And that's creating its own problem. I mean, at some point that has to get corrected okay. in those markets. Fortunately, we're not necessarily there, but it is continuing to be a challenge. Okay. Lower income families definitely would be, I mean, the price points for them are definitely dwindling. Employers are having uh, some challenges finding workers in Austin. Um, what about that? Is that an issue for us? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, so we're the, the Chamber of Commerce does a great job of posting kind of how many, uh, not only what the unemployment is, uh, how many people are looking for a job, but also uh, total number of job postings. So we're around 48, 50,000 job postings, maybe only 30,000, 35,000 unemployed people. So we have wow. way more job postings than we have people who are skilled to fill those jobs. So um, just the other day I heard Apple is mainly focused on relocating people here for to be able to grow here just because our labor, labor pool is, has gotten to be pretty small and, and no real end in sight. We're growing, but we're, we're creating jobs faster than we are bringing in population growth. Okay. In, in your industry and mine, interest rates, mortgage interest rates mm-hmm. play a huge issue. Boy, they do. I know the, uh, all the lenders that I work with had predicted that we'd be at five and a half or six for our for a thirty year fixed rate mortgage by now, and I heard yesterday that went back down to three and three quarters. 
uh, for a 30 year rate with yeah. no points. So what what do you see? What are you what are your sources telling you related to that for the near term? Yeah, I don't think anybody's prepared to predict what interest rates are going to do anymore. We every single person there was predicted we'd be at five and a half by now. I don't know anybody that predicted this. So uh, it's kind of uncharted territory, uh, I think, as far as why interest rates are where they are and where they will go. But this is obviously help dri- helping drive a lot of our real estate market right now. I don't think it would be quite as hot as it has been uh, if we didn't have these these interest rates. It's like 11, 12% buying power for every percentage point. But we've dropped 100, more than 100 basis points from its peak. So that's that translates uh, if you were buying a uh, $400,000 house, you could afford fifty dollars to $60,000 more home than you could have whenever interest rates were at a, another interest point, point higher. So that's a pretty significant change, impact on what people can afford and, and how, many people, how many people can actually get into the market to buy. Okay. I, I've got buyers right now that would buy yesterday if they could find the right house. We're just having a huge issue. I don't know inventory, yeah, inventory is, is, a big is about a third of what it might normally be in a normal year. Of course, it's been that way for several years now. It has been. And so the builders are, what are, what are some of the challenges that the builders are facing? Because they're building as quickly as they can. It's not like they don't want to make money. Yeah, yeah. But uh, can you just hit that a little bit? What's going on in the... With, well, in the, I, you know, I don't know that I'm an expert on it, but I, you know, in the past, a lot of uh, builders were able to do their own development. Uh, they just had access to more capital, and whenever the Great Recession hit, it really did make an impact. Uh, national builders have their shareholders are more risk focused, and so they're not doing as much development. Uh, they probably don't have as much capital available to them. So they're in this whole re- uh, growth cycle that we've had. They just have not built na- nationwide. They've just not built near as many homes as what they have. Not only here. But you know, around the nation, we're back up to where we're doing 16, 17 now this year, possibly 18,000 single family uh, homes, which is where we were back before the recession. But that we were also 500,000 more population than we were back then. So, uh, you know, we probably could support uh, just from the standpoint of our growth, we could support even more home building. Uh, in 2018, we were the we were the number one market for per capita uh, units constructed. Uh, so they're doing a great job of building here, but we have a pretty big deficit, and that has really contributed to our inventory. We just don't we've we didn't build homes for five, six, seven years. We didn't build very many units, either apartment units or single family. So all that failure to build or, or not building as much as we should have has rolled into being you having an inventory shortage for mm-hmm. resale. Yeah, boy, it's it's a real challenge for buyers. We have people that would love to switch homes, move to a bigger home or yeah. a smaller home, but they're afraid to leave their neighborhood because uh, they just don't think they can find anything in their right. Right. In fact, that's the number one counseling session we have is, <laughs> wait a minute, before you sell your house, what are we? where are we going to go? Yeah. So anyway, so Austin uh, is, is looking good. I, I heard today on the Austin Business Journal, uh, report that uh, Austin has made another list of best small businesses in the com- play, best atmosphere for small business in the country. Um, I know that that's uh, may, may not surprise anyone, but people are still coming here with the influx of people that are coming. Um, so, what what challenges additionally does the city of Austin and the area, uh, our MSA, which runs from from Georgetown in the north to San Marcos in the south? What are, what are some of the challenges that the city fathers of these various towns are, are going to face as we move forward? Well, are you referring to traffic by some chance? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it's, it's hard when you're growing fast and you have a, a high growth rate for uh, population growth and, for jo- and then job growth is what's driving the population growth. It's very difficult for cities to build all the infrastructure they need. That's, those are long-term projects. So building roads, building uh, water treatment plants, wastewater treatment. Uh, putting all the utilities in, you can only go so fast. So they, I think they all are faced with how are they going to do the bonds, building enough schools, building enough fire stations, all of that is infrastructure that the faster you grow, the more challenge that is to get that all in place. And frankly, you look around at Round Rock and Cedar Park and Pflugerville and some of the cities, they've done a really good job 
at trying to address that and stay up with the growth. But it is a challenge, and I and I definitely think the roadways are. You know, cities, uh, you, the studies show that cities, as you go from 2 million to 3 million MSA population, uh, that's when the traffic really begins to impact and show up. And so I think the, the pressure is on that okay. really work hard to do everything you can. We're going to have more tollways. There's no way out of it. And we need to put those in place. And then the cities need to stay up with building as much roadways as they can. Right. Wow. That's that's. A lot to think about. Yeah, it is. But wow, it's great to live in Austin, isn't it? It is. It's amazing. So we hope this has been beneficial to you. If you have questions, let me know and we'll get them to David. I appreciate him so much taking the time to do this and uh, extremely good presentation. Uh, I can send you notes uh, on this if you will let me know. Dan at Texas Open Door. Uh, or you can text me 512 699 7082. Uh, again, this is Dan Campbell with Texas Open Door. David Tandy, Texas National Title. Thank you very you bet. much. Enjoyed it. So we'll uh, until next time for Texas Open Door. This is Dan Campbell with the Happy Homeowner.